The Emotional Sea The Second Battle The first battle that takes place post disengagement or escape involves you being plunged into the emotional sea. That first battle is a battle that you are always destined to lose. You will always fight at least one emotional sea battle because you do not know any other way. In all likelihood, you will face several of these battles because you will keep being hoovered back in to our grasp until such time as you learn to recognise what you are dealing with and understanding the dynamic and most importantly of all, what you must do. You will make the common mistakes that victims of narcissists make for two fundamental reasons. One, most people do not actually know what no contact truly involves. This is because most advisors on the subject do not understand our kind in the way that I do, and therefore you will end up with well-intentioned, but limited, flawed, and even dangerous advice. Secondly, your emotional thinking is too high, and this torpedoes your no-contact regime. You must know what you are dealing with. You must know how to implement and maintain a total no-contact regime. You must understand what emotional thinking is, where it comes from, what it does, and what you must do to conquer it. If you do not do these things, you will never cross the emotional sea. You will end up in the repeated grasp of the narcissist, with the associated aggravation, abuse, misery and pain. The emotional thinking will generate emotions, so you remain angry, anxious, frightened, upset, hurt. It will, in all likelihood, take several first emotional sea battles before you realise this and are capable of achieving the appropriate response. You either evade the emotional sea battle by escaping as opposed to being disengaged from, or you prepare yourself for the eventual disengagement in a manner which means you no longer have to endure the first emotional battle. Instead, you move on to the next post-engagement or post-escape battle, the second one, which is the battle of logic against emotional thinking. Some might describe it as head against heart. The logic against emotional battle is a battleground where you stand, a chance of victory. This battleground is one where you have gained understanding. It might be, through your repeated exposure to our kind, that eventually something has clicked into place. Or, more often than not, it is a consequence of an external agent who has explained matters to you. It might be a therapist, a friend, the content of a book, something you saw on YouTube, or, preferably, something that I have provided for you. Whatever has caused this understanding to increase, it is this which provides you with the fighting chance to win this logic against emotional battle. You have been disengaged from, and you run the full gauntlet of emotional fallout thereafter. You may understand what we are. You may understand some of the things that we have done. You may be familiar with the fact that we will try to hoover you back into our grip at some point. You may even begin to realise that you are contributing to the failure of the no-contact regime because you are being led by the misleading emotional thinking. You may even be starting to comprehend that what has happened was all predicated on an illusion. The degree of understanding will vary, but what is important for you is that you are allowing logical thought to be heard above the raw heat and noise of emotional thinking. You, once again, will not just be battling against yourself, but us. But, of course, a strong no-contact regime reduces the risk of having to continue to fight the battle with regard to us. The narcissist will look to hoover you in order to draw you back into our grip in terms of the relationship, or it might be a malign hoover, since... It is not feasible or desired to draw you back into the relationship and therefore we opt to assert control over you and extract negative fuel by way of inherent punishment of your perceived treachery. You will have us as an opponent 
but you will also be fighting yourself, as your emerging logic grapples with the still very high emotional thinking. You have learned many things, and you know you should apply what you have learned, but there is still the emotional pull that you experience. Often, you will say, I know I should do this, but why do I feel like I want to do that? I know I shouldn't contact the narcissist, but what is making me feel that I should do? That is emotional thinking that is acting on behalf of your addiction to the narcissist. The hurt, the love, the longing, the passion, the fear and the upset, they all remain, and your emotional thinking generates that and takes hold of those emotions to use them against you. An ocean of emotion which you once tried to cross, but that was the first emotional battle, and you had barely taken four strokes of swimming before you were engulfed by emotional thinking and sank to the bottom of the sea, drowned by your own emotional thinking. Now things have changed. Utilising logic, you have built a vessel. It is made from cool, hard logic. Critical thinking, once a stranger to you during your savage devaluation, has now reappeared. You have a degree of the ability to analyse and assess it is unlikely that you were able to do so at the level you once enjoyed before we came along, but it is still there. You have grasped logic. Whether this vessel is a tiny raft, dinghy, boat, or a hulking great liner depends very much on the extent of your understanding and the level of logic that you are building. The choppy emotional sea will smash against your vessel of logic. A wave of sorrow will buffet you. A tsunami of longing will threaten to swamp you once again. Wave after wave of emotional thinking will try and capsize your logic vessel as you try to navigate this emotional ocean. Chances are your life raft will be smashed to matchwood and you will be tipped in the sea to drown once again as emotional thinking subsumes you and you find, your back, find yourself back in our hold in some way. This might be you've entered into the relationship with us once again or it might be that you have gone to war losing insight, embarking on an angry tirade against us, failing to realise that this is being driven by your emotional thinking and you are inviting the devil's pitchfork to drive its prongs into you. There are many ways that once you are tipped into this emotional sea, you fail to realise that this is what has happened. That is when you have lost insight and you must take hold of logic once again Realise what has happened and start again. Revisit the journey to get yourself across this emotional sea. Your clipper may be holed beneath the waterline and you start to take on board more and more emotional thinking as steadily you may sink beneath the emotional waves once again. It is during this logic versus emotional thinking battle as you try to cross the emotional ocean that what you must do is reach the dry land beyond and, in effect, put an ocean between you and us. You will be subjected to the misleading nature of emotional thinking. You will be subjected to flawed logic and the battery of emotional responses. Your head will tell you to do one thing, whilst your emotional thinking screams something else at you. This is invariably the harder battle to fight. In the first emotional battle, you did not stand a chance and your defeat is swift and total. But during the second emotional battle, you will make gains. You will suffer losses, seem to make a breakthrough, and then out of nowhere, a tidal wave will flip you from your boat and into the churning ocean, and you drown once again. Such are the vagaries of life. Perhaps it's an anniversary, a birthday, some reminder of the narcissist that comes out of nowhere. All the while, of course, we, through our hoovers, will be seeking to whip up the waves, firing our torpedoes at you, as we endeavour to cause you to sink into this emotional thinking once again and fail to cross the ocean and fail to win this battle. How does this logic against emotional thinking battle manifest in the real world? Here are some examples. One, you will know you ought not to contact us, but you feel the need to send a message to see if we will respond. Two, you will keep checking our social media profiles to ascertain if you are mentioned, if we are with somebody else, and or just to find out what we are doing. Three, you will ask about us 
to our coterie and lieutenants, often unwittingly doing so. And this then is fed back to us. For you will go on dates, but find you are always comparing this new person to us, and they are always found to be wanting in some way. 5. You know what the outcome will be, but you just want one more night with us. 6. You realise that we are unlikely to change, but if you do not try, you will never know. So it's worth one more attempt to talk, isn't it? 7. You understand much of what we did and said was a lie, but surely it could not have all been an illusion. There must have been times where we really did love you, and you need to ask us about this. 8. You know we are bad for you, but you cannot help what you feel. Surely it would be better to stop this pain from being there all the time and just have it occasionally. 9. You know you should not apply to our messages, reply to our messages. Indeed, you ought not to have allowed them to come through in the first place. But it feels so good to have some kind of conversation with us again. It has been too long. 10. You know we are using you, but it still feels so good just to be with us. 11. One kiss cannot hurt, can it? 12. You know better now, so going back will be different because you know what to expect. Armed with this new knowledge, you believe you can enter the lion's den again, but this time be better prepared. 13. You know we're bad for you, but you cannot bear the thought of someone else being with us, and perhaps them being the one to make it work. 14. What if this time the apology is sincere and the desire to change is real? If you walked away from that, would you not only be denying yourself happiness and a further chance to make things right? 15. You understand engaging with us is dangerous, but there are things you really need to tell us. These are just a few of the examples. And what is happening there is that logic is trying to get you to see that you should stay away from us, that you should maintain the no-contact regime. But your emotional thinking gets hold of certain of your empathic traits. For instance, a truth seeker. So you feel compelled to ask us why we treated you the way that we did, or so that you can tell us the truth of what we are, or how you feel. It might be your empathic trait of justice has been corrupted, so that you want some form of outcome and retribution to be visited upon us, which causes you to continue to interact with us. There are many, many different ways that this flawed logic manifests through emotional thinking, corrupting both your empathic and narcissistic traits to compel you to take actions which cause you to enter one or more of the five arenas of interaction, thus breaching your no-contact regime and only prolonging the level of your emotional thinking and keeping you engaged with us. This is an ongoing tug of war between cool, hard logic and the churning, burning emotional thinking. Can you win this battle that rages post disengagement or post escape? Unlike the first battle, which you can never win, with this you can be victorious. You may have to fight this battle many, many times before securing the win. In the beginning, you may be clinging to little more than a log as you desperately try to sail through the emotional ocean and you are swept from it. However, by reading and understanding, by disciplining yourself to apply logic, to prevent your emotions from engulfing you, by reading more and increasing your knowledge, you will begin to increase your logic vessel, from log to raft to dinghy. Still, you may be swamped and drowned again, but then it becomes a small boat a yacht, a clipper, a steamer, a passenger liner, a frigate, a destroyer, and a super tanker. Each time, utilising the information I provide to you, you rebuild better, bigger, and stronger as you learn more, making this, leg this logic vessel more seaworthy. You begin to chart routes, so you avoid the most tumultuous emotional seas, finally beginning to steer through calmer waters, until... There it is, on the horizon, the sight of land and the final battle that occurs with our kind post-disengagement or post-escape. It goes without saying that the sooner you access my work and apply it, that you utilise the many materials that I provide to you, including these videos and the material in the Knowledge Vault and what can be provided through consultation, the faster you will build that huge logic vessel and the sooner you will get across the emotional sea. You will use logic more and more. It will get easier to forge your way through it. And with that, weakened emotional thinking will lead to those emotions of pain, hurt, regret, anxiety, anger, frustration, loneliness, all being reduced. You see, it is not time that heals everything, but it is time away from the thing that causes you the problem, 
that causes you to be able to heal. You have to stay away from us, stay away from us and out of the five arenas of interaction. Those five arenas are detailed in my additional work in the Knowledge Vault, so you understand which arenas are affected. Many people do not realise just how wide your no-contact has to be. This emotion against logic battle is not an easy battle. You will fight it several times. And each time you should be better prepared to cross the emotional ocean and improve your prospects of success. Sometimes you are taken unawares by some of our provocative tactics and dumped unceremoniously into the water once again. Sometimes, as I've mentioned, there will be a surge in your emotional thinking triggered by an event, the certain vagaries that occur with life. But it is a battle that you can win through the dedicated application of my knowledge and gaining understanding. I will give you the tools to build that vessel. You can build it and you will cross the emotional sea and achieve success in the second battle of the emotional sea.